I'd like to extend a welcome this morning to all of those who are visiting the university, perhaps for the first time, and especially to those who haven't before taken part in one of our most important and happy occasions when we celebrate our graduations. Today, we shall confer awards on those who have satisfied the Council of the University that they have met requirements for admission to awards in the Faculty of Engineering and the Faculty of Social Science. I'd also draw to your attention that the printed program lists prizes awarded on the basis of academic merit. To today's graduates, I'd like to offer congratulations to each one of you. Uh, those of you who are here today, and of course there are some who could not attend today, and we also congratulate them. Congratulations, I think, are due also, not just to the graduates, but to your support teams all the friends and families who've rallied around you over these last few years, who've seen you through the long nights, finishing your assignments, soothed your nerves at examination times. I think this celebration belongs to all of those, as, as well as to the ones who are coming to receive their degrees. The academic and other staff of the university are also here to join in the celebrations and they always enjoy these occasions to see the students that they've laboured so hard to bring up to the required standard coming forward to take their degrees. And thanks are due to them as well. We hope that now you've achieved your degree or award today, that you will maintain your links with this university. Uh, as graduates, you will belong to the university convocation, and through that you'll be kept informed of what is going on here, what changes are happening, what major events take place. You can also be members of the council, perhaps. Many of you that are here today will have already started on new careers or continued uh, the work that you were doing, some still perhaps looking for opportunities. Whichever group you're in, you know that the university stands behind you and gives you all our good wishes for your careers. We hope that as you pursue your next goal, next stage of your life, you will have taken with you from the university many things, many happy memories, many friendships that will endure through your life, and an open and inquiring approach to issues, something that will sustain you in whatever lies ahead. And our good wishes go with you in that. I'd like to uh, open the formal part of today's proceedings by inviting Professor Bryson, Dean of the Faculty of Social Science, to present the candidate for admission to an honorary degree in the Faculty of Social Science, and the candidate will be presented in absentia. Chancellor. Mr. Len de Silva, or Uncle Lenny as he is fondly and respectfully referred to by his people and other admirers, is a wise traditional custodian of Aboriginal culture. He has made a unique contribution to the preservation of traditional Aboriginal ways in New South Wales. In doing this, he has also made a vital contribution to the preservation of the world's cultural heritage. Mr. De Silva was born in northeastern New South Wales. Over many years, he worked and excelled in sport across the state. 
He was initiated in the 1930s. This was at a time when the practice of initiation was, under pressure from non-Aboriginal Australia, at risk of disappearing. Mr De Silva was one of the last fully initiated men of the era. Over the years, Mr De Silva was subjected to strong pressures, particularly through welfare workers in the Christian church, to give up traditional Aboriginal cultural practices, but he did not succumb to these pressures. He recognised the great importance for Aboriginal identity of keeping traditional knowledge alive. Len de Silva, in fact, rekindled a widespread interest among young Aboriginal men in initiation and the learning of traditional knowledge. He has been associated with the initiation of more than 40 Aboriginal men drawn from nine different language groups in New South Wales. He has also ensured there will be continuity. There are now seven recognised custodians who, whom he has taught and who will take responsibility for the education of young men in the future. Aboriginal law and culture are much more secure because of his remarkable efforts. That timeless chain, the transmission of Aboriginal law and culture, will not be broken. The award of an honorary degree is one of the ways in which a university recognises outstanding citizens. It is a way of acknowledging the importance of their work. In recognising the general importance of Len de Silva's work, this award can be seen as part of a more general awakening to the need to move beyond ethnocentric education. It is part of a move towards recognition of the intrinsic value of Aboriginal culture. At the University of Newcastle, this is being acknowledged at the undergraduate level in the development of the teaching of Aboriginal studies within the Faculty of Arts. This is a step in the right direction, but there's a long way to go before our universities can genuinely claim to be freely accessible to Aboriginal students and to those from other cultures. Len de Silva's life and achievements are the very epitome of a university's scholarly commitment. He has preserved ancient and distinctive knowledge. He has passed this on to the young and he has ensured educational continuity. His work has been of immense importance to Aboriginal people, but the significance of his work goes far beyond this. His work is crucial to world culture because every time a traditional culture is diminished, we are all so much the poorer. Mr. Lender Silver is a wise educator with much to teach the non-Aboriginal as well as the Aboriginal community. Aboriginal culture has always afforded the land a central place, but only now, as we face potential environmental disaster, is non-Aboriginal society adequately recognising the land's importance. There is much else from traditional Aboriginal society that can be learned, for example, about a cooperative lifestyle, and issues of responsibility. Non-Aboriginal Australia has been slow to recognise the wisdom and importance of Aboriginal knowledge. This award is a small step towards such a recognition and it is especially timely because next year, 1993, has been declared the, internationally the Year of Indigenous People. Chancellor, it is indeed an honour and a unique privilege for me to present Mr. Len de Silva for admission to the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa in Absentia. In the name of the Council and by my authority as Chancellor, I admit Mr. Len de Silva to the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters in Absentia. And I now have pleasure in inviting Mrs. Ethel de Silva to receive the testamer on behalf of Mr. De Silva, who unfortunately could not be with us today.
Ladies and gentlemen, I now have pleasure in inviting Dr. W.J.A. Jonas, Director of the Australian Institute of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Studies in Canberra, to deliver to us the occasional address. Dr. Jonas. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Ethel de Silva, graduands, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to begin this occasional address by congratulating all of the people who will be awarded degrees today. For all of you, it's a truly personal, historic occasion and one which is well deserved. But I'd also like to point out to you that another significant historical event is occurring here today and it's an event in which we are all privileged to be taking part. And I refer, of course, to the awarding of an honorary degree to our now Dr. Linda Silva. When the invasion of this continent commenced just over 200 years ago, the indigenous peoples here had an enormously rich cultural and intellectual life. Many strict rituals and traditions were adhered to. For example, young people underwent rigorous training before they were admitted into adulthood. Older people became extremely learned repositories and sources of knowledge. And guiding intellectual, spiritual and other matters were those people whom the late Professor Elkin, a very eminent anthropologist, referred to as Aboriginal men of high degree. As an integral part of cultural and social life, important events were marked by highly colourful ceremonies overseen by these men of high degree. The parallels with what is happening here today are fairly obvious. Unfortunately, especially along the eastern part of Australia, the invasion caused much of this rich cultural heritage to be lost. Epidemics of smallpox and other introduced diseases killed many thousands of people. Massacres such as those of Waterloo Creek and Mile Creek, and no doubt many never recorded, also took their toll, as did alcohol. Most devastating of all, of course, was the loss of the land on which cultural and other activities were practiced. Such were the effects of the invasion that by the second half of the 19th century, Aborigines were considered to be a dying race who needed to be protected. And various protection boards and agencies were established to handle what was called the Aboriginal problem. Two main forms of protection were enforced, the restriction of people to reserves and missions on the fringes of towns, and the removal of children from their parents and extended families. This latter practice continued right into the 1960s. Well, the Aboriginal race didn't die out, so for many governments, the Aboriginal problem remained. And it was then decided that the best thing which could happen would be for blacks to become whites. So official policies became those of assimilation. And by 1965, this meant, and I quote, the policy of assimilation seeks that all persons of Aboriginal descent will choose to attain a similar manner of life of other Australians and live as members of a single Australian community. The policy of assimilation brought no beneficial treatment of Aboriginal people and was ultimately discredited and abandoned. Following the election of the Whitlam government in 1972, it was replaced by a policy of self-determination. And since then, various federal and state governments have introduced some forms of land rights. And Aboriginal people themselves, through projects those, such as those run by the highly esteemed Newcastle Awabical Cooperative have contributed to the self-determination process. Unfortunately, the cumulative effects of 200 years of dispossession cannot be changed very quickly. Aboriginal people by any measuring stick are still the most disadvantaged group in Australian society in socio-economic terms. And as some recent unfortunate events have shown, some community attitudes towards Aboriginal people leave great room for improvement. But now, 
using that very brief and potted history as a base, let me adopt a more positive note. The Aboriginal race is not going to go away or die out. Numbers are on the increase, as was shown by the National Census figures from 1981 and 1986, and I understand from the yet-to-be-released figures from the Census of 1991. There's been a great resurgence of interest in Aboriginal people's cultures by Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people. Schools and tertiary institutions throughout the country are now offering a variety of courses in Aboriginal studies which are proving to be very popular. The first corroboree to be held in this region for decades, held here at this university, was spectacularly well attended. My own institute is currently preparing to publish an encyclopaedia of Aboriginal Australia, and this is generating much interest and enthusiasm. And ultimately, the community awareness which develops from all of these things can only be beneficial to both black and white as Aboriginal culture is seen as a basis for the heritage of all Australians. Aboriginal people are obtaining tertiary qualifications in increasing numbers. This can be directly related to the introduction of enclaves and support systems that started over 10 years ago and to the innovative thinking and practices of institutions such as this one. Both the Newcastle University Medical Faculty's training of Aboriginal doctors and the pioneering work of John Heath and other people at Wallatooka across the creek are known Australia-wide. And there are also two interrelated issues on the national agenda at the moment which have the potential to bring beneficial results to Aboriginal people and to chart the course of history for many years to come. The first of those is the issue of sovereignty. Moves for the issue of Aboriginal sovereignty to be addressed are here. They won't go away in the near future and they're gaining momentum. At a recent national conference in Sydney called The Future of Australia's Dreaming, all sessions and all workshops were underlain and permeated by the concept of Aboriginal sovereignty. The second issue is reconciliation. The National Council for Aboriginal Reconciliation has now been established with legal powers and responsibilities and with bipartisan parliamentary support. Its 10-year deliberations may set the scene for Aboriginal affairs well into the next century, which is where I make a plea to you graduates. We must not, and we will not, see a return to the conditions which Aboriginal people have endured in the past. We know, as I've outlined, that there's an historically derived socio-economic gap between Aborigines and non-Aborigines in this country. And we also know that unless positive intervention is taken, such gaps tend to widen. Government and Aboriginal people are attempting to close the gap, but much will depend on increased community awareness. You are the community leaders of the very near future. You've been trained in the skills of critical inquiry to help you search for meaning and truth. And the fact that you're graduating here means that you've learned those lessons well. I ask you now, as you continue to learn the many lessons that await you, to always apply what you've learned about critical inquiry and the search for truth into all situations where you can contribute to remedying dispossession and to overcoming inequities. In spite of all of the injustices of the last 200 years, men of high degree, such as Uncle Lenny de Silva, have done their utmost to keep Aboriginal culture alive, and against all odds, they've succeeded. With your help, the task will be made much easier. I congratulate the University of Newcastle on the magnificent gesture it's made here today and I wish you all the very best for a highly successful future. Thank you.
will all candidates for admission to the awards undertaken within the Faculty of Engineering please stand. <coughs> Chancellor, I present to you the candidates for admission to awards undertaken within the Faculty of Engineering as specified in the program. In the name of the Council and by my authority as Chancellor, I confer the award specified in the program on all those graduates from the Faculty of Engineering who are present today and in absentia on those unable to be present. <laughs> Chancellor, for admission to the degree of Bachelor of Computer Science, Richard Baranski. Adam Boyle. Peter Darren Bray. Paul Jeffrey Bunt. Philip Grant Cairns. <laughs> Nigel Chun Chun Tan. <laughs> Cynthia N. Yi Chen. Jonathan Ross Coombs. Stuart Richard Cooper. David Stephen Don. Stephen Don John Dunn. Andrew Robert Foote. Mark Eden Fowler. Randall John Gallimore. <laughs> Brett Martin Graham. <laughs> Dragan Yankovic. Tanya Leslie Martin. <laughs> Dean James Matthews. <laughs> Stephen Anthony McIntyre.
Scott McCain Milburn. Andrew Mark Murray Allen. Mark John Reckenberg. David Scott Rose. Andrew Rutherford. Mark William Shoemaker. Jeffrey Sin. <laughs> Jeffrey Owen Skellums. <laughs> David Gordon Thomas. Siva Kuma Varatharaja. T. Chiang Hui. Li Chien Wen. Chancellor for admission to the degree of Bachelor of Engineering in Chemical Engineering, Robert John Jeffrey. <laughs> Herman Thamram. Alan Al Young. <laughs> Stephen Richard Mills, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Gerard Charles Zamet. Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Rajesh Chatia, Honours Class 2, Division 1. <laughs> George Sebastian Katampalil, Honours Class 2, Division 1. <laughs> Jamie Kennedy Wilson, Honours Class 2, Division 1. Katrina Mary Wilson, Honours Class 2, Division 1. Andrew Charles Beath, Honours Class 1. Julie May Wattis, 
Honours Class 1. Karen Ann Brownlee, Honours Class 1 and University Medal. In Civil Engineering, Ang Jin Han. Robert John Blythe. Bradley Stephen Clark. Anthony Paul Favetta. Stephen Miles Griffin. Julian Anthony Johnson. <laughs> Siu Kim Leong. <laughs> Elizabeth Katrina Marju. Michelle Diane McDonald. <laughs> Stuart Neil Mitchell. Thanks very much. Emmanuel Papa Georgia. John Critchley Sayers. Robert Bradley Taylor. Marlon Lee Toft. Roderick William Bernard, Honours Class 2, Division 2. Mark Thomas Brennan, Honours Class 2, Division 2. David John Caldwell, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Owen Peter Droop, Honours Class 2, Division 2. Ian John Hill, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> D. 
Denio Martinelli, Honours Class 2, Division 2. Monique Elizabeth Patterson, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> David William Pavitt, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Ian Gordon Ward, Honours Class 2, Division 2. Sharon Ann Murphy, Honours Class 2, Division 1. Andrew John Abbo, Honours Class 1. Brendan Lawrence Burkhout, Honours Class 1. In Computer Engineering, Anandika Kathagamanathan. Jean Singh Lee. <laughs> Pei Su Wei. <laughs> Michael John Ramplin. The Boon Kiat Boon Lerd. <laughs> Julius Wee Wai Leong. Martin Allen Fowell, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Michael Conrad Hitz, Honours Class 2, Division 2. Mark William Schumacher, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Helena Aromani Thavathurai, Honours Class 2, Division 2. Andrew Mark Medioli, Honours Class 2, Division 1. <laughs> Brendan John Goodall Alden, Honours Class 2, Division 1. Paul Edgar Poganowski, Honours Class 2, Division 1. Shane Paul Lontis, Honours Class 1.
in electrical engineering, David John Austin. Boon Wa Lo. Sean O'Reilly. Christopher Brian Scanlon. David Robert Webb. <laughs> Angus Eric Liz Isley, Honours Class 2, Division 2. Christopher Gerard Jones, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Kylie Ann Nash, Honours Class 2, Division 2. David Robert Snow, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Karen Marie Daniels, Honours Class 2, Division 1. Rupert William Reeve, Honours Class 2, Division 1. Roger Michael Gray, Honours Class 1. Kerry Ann Hall, Honours Class 1. <laughs> Yuang Sing Kiong, Honours Class 1. Rowan Neil Malloy, Honours Class 1. <laughs> Anthony Jeffrey Pomfret, Honours Class 1. Robert Mitchison, Honours Class 1 and University Medal. <laughs> In Industrial Engineering, Indraya Hatagalam. <laughs> Peter John Mercer. Wong Ying Yin, Honours Class 2, Division 1. In Mechanical Engineering, David William Chin.
Rommel Kazirang. Scott Andrew Mole. <laughs> Connell John O'Donoghue. <laughs> Rajesh Prakash. Paul William Smith. Andrew Sue Keen Tan. Mark Tilsley. Graham Eric Wilson. <laughs> Brennan Mark Basirio, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Peter Davis. Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> David William Evans, Honours Class 2, Division 2. Gordon Alexander Fink, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Peter Kevin Gorman, Honours Class 2, Division 2. Chu and Ho, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Michael John Leonard, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> William McMillan McBride. Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Michael Andrew Montgomery, Honours Class 2, Division 2. Alan David Rogers, Honours Class 2, Division 2. <laughs> Barry Allen Wise, Honours Class 2, Division 2. Matthew Eric Betchley, Honours Class 1. <laughs> David Anthony Craig, Honours Class 1. <laughs> Paul Raymond Ebert, Honours Class 1. <laughs> 
For admission to the degree of Bachelor of Surveying, Jonathan Frank Burke. Richard James Hutchison. Bradley George Judge. Brett Douglas Kittle. Uh, Dean Thomas Mackey. Andrew Charles Peacock. <laughs> Jeffrey Charles Rock. <laughs> David Craig Wallace. Roderick William Bernard, Honours Class 2, Division 1. <laughs> Peter Bushel Cupid, Honours Class 2, Division 1. For admission to the degree of Bachelor of Computer Science Honours, Andrew Hyde, Honours Class 2, Division 1. <laughs> Gavin Richard Turner, Honours Class 1. David Mark Gorton, Honours Class 1 at University Medal. Anthony Colin Manane, Honours Class 1 and University Medal. Chancellor, for the award of the Graduate Diploma in Computer Science, David James Channon. <laughs> James Leslie Gillen. Mark Anthony Matthews. Siang <laughs> Lei Siv. <laughs> Alan Su. Chancellor, 
for admission to the degree of Master of Engineering, the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, Geoffrey Stephen Engel, Bachelor of Engineering for a thesis entitled VLSI Implementation of a Source Coding Data Compression System. Stephen Ronald Weller, Bachelor of Engineering for a thesis entitled Model Based Tracking of an Incline Orbit Satellites. <laughs> From the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Thomas Francis Bunn, Bachelor of Science, Macquarie University, for a thesis entitled the dense phase hydraulic conveying of power station ash. <laughs> Chia Yong Teng, Bachelor of Engineering, for a thesis entitled Develop Development of a Knowledge Based System for Bulk Materials Handling. Chancellor, for admission to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy from the Department of Chemical Engineering, Tony Raymond Ferrugia, Bachelor of Science for a thesis entitled Factors which affect the dustiness of coal. From the Department of Civil Engineering and Surveying, Mukshed Ahmed, Bachelor of Science Engineering, Master of Science Engineering from Bangladesh University of Technology, and Master of Engineering Science, Monash, for a thesis entitled, Reliability Fatigue Analysis of Offshore Structures. Chan Hong Ying, Bachelor of Engineering, Monash, for a thesis entitled System Reliability Analysis with Time Dependent Loads and Resistances. <laughs> Lloyd John Pilgrim, Bachelor of Surveying, for a thesis entitled Simultaneous Three-Dimensional Object Matching and Surface Difference Detection in a Minimally Restrained Environment. <laughs> From the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, Ying Shi, Bachelor of Engineering from Shanghai University of Technology, for a thesis entitled Nonlinear Robust Control of Application in Power System. Yui Wang, Bachelor of Engineering, Beijing University, and Master of Engineering in Tsinghuan University, uh, for a thesis entitled Adaptive and Nonlinear Control Controller Design. Li Chen Siong, Bachelor of Engineering and Master of Science in the National University of Singapore, 
for a thesis entitled Contributions to High Resolution Array Processing. Li Hua Zhi, Bachelor of Engineering and Master of Engineering in the East China Institute of Technology for a thesis entitled H Infinity Control and Filtering Assistance with Parameter Uncertainty. From the Department of Mechanical Engineering, David John Bennett, Bachelor of Engineering, for a thesis entitled Analysis and Performance of Conveyor Belt Cleaning Systems. Ling Zhang, Bachelor of Engineering in Beijing University, for a thesis entitled Computer Simulation of Diffusion Array in Binary Systems. From the Department of Computer Science, Frank Franz Alexander Henskins, Bachelor of Mathematics, Diplomat in Education and Diplomat in Computer Science, for a thesis entitled, A Capability-Based Persistent Distributed Share Memory. Michael John Hitchin, Bachelor of Mathematics Honours, for a thesis entitled Design and Implementation of a Generic Command Language Interpreter. Candidates for admission to awards undertaken within the Faculty of Social Science, please stand. Chancellor, I present to you candidates for admission to awards undertaken within the Faculty of Social Science as specified in the program. In the name of the Council and by my authority as Chancellor, I confer the awards specified in the program on all those graduands from the Faculty of Social Science who are present today and in absentia on those unable to be present. Chancellor, for the award of the Associate Diploma in Police Studies, Stephen Ralph Butler. Mark Anthony Hazel. Tony Heggie. Derek Lawrence Irving. Bruce David Kimber. David James Knowles.
Bruce Sidney McGregor. Mark Anthony Minahan. Graham Leslie Thomas. George Mark Webb. Paul John Woodward. <laughs> Chancellor, for the award of the Associate Diploma in Social Welfare, Amanda Marie Cummins. Lorraine Bernadette Doolan. <laughs> Stephanie Lovell. <laughs> Nola June Neville. Robin Lynette Sanderson. <laughs> Chancellor, for admission to the degree of Bachelor of Social Science, Tourism and Recreation, Leah Nicole Audette. Elizabeth Joy Bell. <laughs> Susan Marie Boyd. <laughs> Megan and Brewster. Selena Gail Buckley. Thank you very much, Jason. Yes. Thank you. Kathy Ann Doyle. Kylie Ann Fairhall. Karen Marie Feeney. Brett Leslie Horwood. Natasha Holmes. Rebecca Mafanwi Jones. <laughs> Catherine Marie Knowles. <laughs> Kylie Josephine Long. Jean Maria McLeod. Susan Elizabeth McLeod. Nicole Ann Marshall.
Susan McCarthy. Catriona Moore. <laughs> Megan Gwyneth Powell. <laughs> Adrian Douglas Relf. Susan Marie Tripney. <laughs> Emma Kathleen Wallace. <laughs> Ra Rachel Louise Whalen. Fiona Mary Worthington. <laughs> Chancellor, for admission to the degree of Bachelor of Social Science, Welfare Studies, Elizabeth Adams. Jody Erica Baker. <laughs> Wayne Peter Barrett. <laughs> Dorothy June Bennett. Carol Dawn Bissett. Karen Joy Bowen. Rosemary Bristow. Deborah Lynn Brock. Anna Brown. Elizabeth Laura Carruthers. Deborah Ann Clark. <laughs> Julia Elizabeth Clark. <laughs> Kim Doris Curtis. John Dangus. <laughs> Gabriella Den Hollander. Thank you so much. Catherine Louise Duncan. Susan Mary Everett.
Jacqueline Tricia Fox. Tanya Foy. Fraser. Anna Isabel Hartry. Slavika Susan Christoph. Beth Pamela Janice. <laughs> Catherine Ann Jessup. <laughs> Terry Michelle Jones. Joanne Marie Kahn. <laughs> Leslie James Patrick Chris. Marie Lucy Lang. <laughs> Gwyneth Ula Leaney. <laughs> Kerry Ann McDermott. Louise Ruth Metz. Bruce Patrick Morris. Peter Danson King Yu Ing. Sharon Doreen Nichols. Ingrid Jane Mitchell. Antonetta Nunes. Lisa Nicole Pasco. <laughs> Barbara Claire Pryor. <laughs> Tanya Roberts. Patricia Joan Ryan.
Mary Ann Saunders. Lillian Sazdanoff Shea. Yvonne Marie Sirhan. <laughs> Helen Ann Shoesmith. <laughs> Wendy Therese Smith. Susan Gay Sinclair. Kesley Dale Summerfield. Stephanie Ann Teasdale. Warren Kenneth Tiplady. <laughs> Christy Rennie Turner. Melissa Valentinus. <laughs> Gina Vinapal. <laughs> Sonia Jane Wallace. Peter Janelle Whitehead. <laughs> Lisa Whittaker. <laughs> Justine Nicole Wilton. Chancellor, for admission to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy from the Department of Sociology and Anthropology, <laughs> Rosemary Vivian Kant, Bachelor of Education Honours and Master of Education in the University of Western Australia for a thesis entitled Tending Work. I now have great pleasure in inviting Karen Ann Brownlee to respond on behalf of the graduates.
Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow graduates. Today represents a very important day for those of us who are graduating. We've just received our degrees and now we can spend some time celebrating the completion of many years of hard study. The length of time we've all spent here varies from three to seven years or more. That's a long time. And during those years, we've seen many changes around the university. There's been the amalgamation of the university with the former Hunter Institute, the introduction of the controversial HEX payment, construction of many new buildings, the most recent being the new Chancellery building, and repairs to existing buildings after the 1989 earthquake. I've been here for six years, and during that time, I have seen that some things never change. There's always the O-ball and the recovery ball, fluid symposiums, the traumas of finding a place to live and then the money to live on, mosquitoes and of course cafeteria food. <laughs> but we ourselves have also changed. Most of us started as young, bright-eyed teenagers and now we're leaving as mature, educated adults. At least we'd like to think so. During that time, many people have helped us both personally and in our education. I'd like to thank the university as a whole for providing us with the necessary tools to gain an education, excellent computer and library services, and a very high standard of academic staff. I sincerely thank the lecturers for being present today. I know the start was extremely early for them, but they made the effort to come. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the sports and students' unions for providing us with much needed sport, recreational and social activities, much of which involved the consumption of copious amounts of that amber fluid, a very important university tradition. The final thanks must go to parents, family, old friends and new friends, because without them and their much needed support, many of us wouldn't be here today. But we are here and we have our degrees in hand. We can now look forward to the next stage of our lives, whether that be in further study or in careers outside the university. And I'm sure that whichever path we take, there will be new and exciting challenges waiting for us. Thank you. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, it's already evident that this is indeed an occasion for celebration and congratulation. It's an occasion of much joy and satisfaction. And it's an occasion which is properly marked by ceremony and serious words. And rightly so, but it represents an important threshold for all of us. For each of you who graduate today, this is indeed the culmination of dedicated years of much work, of the transformation of bright promise into high achievement. For those friends and families here, there would have been an equally recognizable change. The stern rigor of timetables, essays, examinations, is now being relaxed. And perhaps only now are you discovering the extent to which academic demands have governed your lives. Without your support and sacrifices, preparation for and justification of today's ceremony would not have been possible. Your contributions were indeed both necessary and sufficient. And for the university staff, there's a satisfaction and pleasure of recording your achievements and successes. 
to which their skills, commitment, scholarship and experience have made signal contribution. So to all of you, I offer my congratulations to graduates, parents, families, friends, academic and general staff. It is very good to have this formal occasion to celebrate your splendid achievements. Chancellor, some of the more meaty uh, remarks that are attributable to the Vice-Chancellor have already been printed in the program. I'm not going to repeat those. I'm sure you'll all wish to read them over lunch. <laughs> but I do please want to take this opportunity to make one or two additional remarks. Firstly, I want to express my pleasure in the award today of the degree to Dr. De Silva and express on all our behalf our hopes for his speedy recovery and release from hospital. We look to having him amongst our community in the near future. And I want to express my pleasure that Mrs. De Silva was here to grace our ceremony this morning and to receive the degree on his behalf. I want to thank Dr. Jonas for his wise comments and helpful remarks and to congratulate Ms. Brownlee on her splendid uh, comment. Now, whether I could endorse the view that my academic colleagues would find this morning a particularly early start, I perhaps should leave to another forum. These celebrations do in fact mark an academic ritual of some importance and considerable history. The presentation of graduands is not entirely as an excuse for a celebration. It carries forward an old tradition of many hundreds of years in which those who had satisfied the requirements of the university and were to be admitted to its full membership as graduates were presented to the body of the university. So the presentation, the recognition by the Chancellor of you, the graduates today, continues a very old tradition. It also, of course, marks a formal threshold to a new stage in your life. You are now to assume these old traditional responsibilities of graduates in the new guise that we expect of graduates in our community today. The well-being of our society is indeed dependent on the quality of the contributions you are now able and prepared to make. Economists are frequently heard to argue that the effective operation of a free market depends both on the supply of human capital, that's you, and also on the existence of a free society. Now some of us might be prepared to doubt the implicit perfection of a free market economy despite its current apparent success in the world. But none of us can seriously doubt the need to ensure that our democratic form of government functions as a truly free society. One of the implicit obligations placed on graduates is to participate in the active discussion of important issues. It cannot be sufficient and you cannot regard it as satisfactory to allow the agenda for public interest to be set solely by the media and by our political leaders. But additionally, and very importantly, those of you graduating at this ceremony have very special responsibilities reflecting your academic and professional expertise. Those of you who graduate from the Faculty of Engineering have a particular responsibility 
for the generation of wealth. That is a proud task and it's an important task for this country. This country which is so richly endowed in natural resources has to find ways of generating and translating those natural resources into the richness which is needed to allow our society to flourish. <coughs> those of you from the Faculty of Social Sciences have equally important tasks. There is little point in generating wealth if we do not use it to develop a society which is rich in the fullest sense of the word. And it takes little imagination on this Saturday morning with news from Los Angeles to recognize that one of the deepest problems that our society faces is that of the social structure of the communities and the overall society in which we live. You have major tasks ahead of you. You must now put to good use the talents and abilities you now know you possess. It's important to all of us that you do so. The future lies in your hands. Those of us in my generation put it in your hands with some confidence. You have a major job ahead of you. Please take it seriously. Please succeed. I wish you well. Good luck and congratulations. Before uh, concluding this formal ceremony, my final uh, task is to invite everyone present to join the university at morning tea, which will be served in the university union. I think it is still morning, yes. It's only 10 to 12. <laughs> so if you hurry, you can get in before noon. <laughs> so I now declare this ceremony closed. <laughs>